Today we're going to qualitatively examine an object's motion by using motion graphs. So we're going to be interpreting motion graphs. This is a visual way for us to represent an object's motion. Okay, when we set it up, we're going to have, most times when we think of motion, we think of objects as moving along some kind of number line you know, with the initial position here, and then maybe it moves here, and then maybe it goes to here, something along those lines. Okay. If we want to represent where the object is with respect to time, we need to add a second axis. Okay, So we're going to take this position axis and we're going to put it on our y side. So position will be here. And we're going to add in the time aspect. So our time component will be along this axis. Okay, If we wanted to graph these positions, x0, x1, x2, x3, we will label them on our y-axis, okay, which is kind of counterintuitive, but whenever we make graphs with respect to time, time is always going to be on our horizontal axis. So we set this up. x initial will go right here. We'll put x1 a little bit above it. Okay, x2, there's a pretty big gap between, so we'll move x2 way up here. And then we'll put x3 just a little bit above x2. Okay. Say we had some time periods, and our time periods we want to make pretty much even across the axis here. So we'll put T1 here, we'll try to make it as even as we can. We'll put T2 here, again, try to make it as even as we can on this axis. And we'll put time number 3. Okay, so now we want to graph its position at these different points. Okay, and if we were to show a graph of that object, we should travel on something like this. Okay, that's assuming that's moving at a constant velocity. Okay, if we were to put our axis up again, our position, our just generic position versus time graph, and we want to talk about the slope that if we're going to take. Okay, so let's say we have x1 is here, x2 is here. Let's say time one is right here and time two is right here. If we make a graph, or a line I should say, from x1 to x2 at t1 to t2, and we want to find the slope of that line. We would say, you know, our just generic slope equation is delta y over delta x. Okay, well what's on our y-axis this time? That's right, it's position. So it's really going to be delta x up here because it's changed in position which we call displacement and on our x-axis it's delta t. Is this familiar to something you've seen before this equation right here? Delta x over delta t? Sure, we don't really use the delta in front of the t but this gives us an equation for our velocity. So anytime you take the slope of a position versus time graph that gives you an object's velocity during that time period. Okay, so it's very important to remember that. We have a few different shapes that we're going to examine here for position versus time graphs and talk about how an object moves or doesn't move when you see these specific shapes. The first we're going to look at is a nice flat horizontal line. Okay, assume every line is straight. I'm drawing these by hand, so they're going to be a little bit crooked at the end, like this one is. Okay, so I can just hopefully make that a little bit neater, clean that up a little bit. Okay, so a nice flat horizontal line. If we call this position x1, how is position changing over time? You're right, it's not changing. Okay, if we were to look at the object's position at x1, it's still, or at t1, it's still at x1. At t2, still at x1. At t3, still at x1. At t4, still at x1. So what is our object, or how can we describe our object's motion for this shape on a position versus time graph? Exactly, the object is at rest. Okay, so we would describe our object in this case as being at rest. So when you see that horizontal line, you know that the object is at rest. If you think of it in terms of the slope, what's the slope of a horizontal line? Well, 
the slope is zero. And we said before that slope equals velocity. So if the slope of our line is zero, then we know the velocity of our object is also going to be zero. Okay? So keep those same things in mind. You can think of it in terms of looking at the motion, or you can think of it in terms of the slope, however you're comfortable doing it. Okay, let's look at our next shape. Our next shape is going to be a nice straight line with a positive slope point. Okay? So let's look at this in terms of the distances traveled. Okay, so here's T1. It's going to correspond to a distance of X1. T2 is going to be X2. Okay? Again, trying to do this as best I can. Okay, X3, then T4, X4, okay? Look at these displacements, okay? From X0 to X1, from X1 to X2, from X2 to X3, and then from X3 to X4. What do they look like? Exactly, they're the same displacement. Okay, so looking at this graph, we can see that our object is covering the same amount of distance in the same amount of time. So anytime something is the same, we say that it is constant. Okay, is our object moving further away from its initial position over time, or is it getting closer back to where it starts over time? Okay, it's moving upward, so an upward window is going to give us a positive slope, and if it's moving greater, distances away, we also know that it's going a positive direction. So anytime you see a positive slope straight line, we describe that object's motion as being as having a positive constant velocity. Okay? And if you were to take the slope of it, it would be a positive constant value. Okay? So keep that in mind. Slope or just general shape of the graph. Okay, let's look at if it was a negative sloped line. Okay, so in this case our object is going to start up here. Okay, we'll call that x naught. If we figure out where x1 is, it's roughly right there. Okay, x2, we're going to say is right there, x3 will be here, and x4 is right here. Okay, let's look at our displacements here. So again, from x0 to x1, is that going to be that value right there? That's the delta x. From x1 to x2, there's your delta x. From x2 to x3, there's your delta x. From x3 to x4, there's your delta x. So as we see again, our delta x's are going to be the same. However, our object is moving back in the opposite direction. Notice that the general shape of our line has that downward slope to it. Okay, It's going downhill. So we know the slope of this line is going to be negative, And our object is moving back in the other direction. So when you ever see a line that's a straight line that has a downward slope on a position versus time graph, we can describe that object's motion as having a negative constant velocity. Okay, So we'd say that this object has a negative constant velocity. The slope of the line, again, is a constant negative value. Okay, So those are our shapes when the object is traveling at a constant rate. It's either nice, flat, horizontal, which means that it's at rest. If it's a positive sloped line, straight line, then it has a positive constant velocity. And if it's a negative straight line, then it's a negative constant velocity. Well, let's 